Hello everybody, Carl here, and here we go with my review of the 1992 film, Batman Returns. Okay, so I said I wouldn't do full plot rundown videos with my X-Men ones when really unnecessary, but with these films I think it really is necessary for me to really get down what I have wrong with them. I'm sure though that once we get to the Nolan films, a more general analysis will be better suited. Not to mention time saving considering how long those movies are. So, Batman Returns. Even more than its predecessor, it's one that divides fans and casual viewers alike. And unlike Batman, it always has. Children find it scary, parents found it offensive, and fans found it, well, not Batman. Before we begin the full review, I'll make the following statement. This is a good Tim Burton movie, and I enjoy it as such when I'm in the mood. It, however, is not a Batman movie. It's a Batman movie in name only, and in costumes. However, as with any Burton film, one must dispense with the ideas of deep plots and simple things like real-world logic. It's a macabre cartoon, and you either like that or you don't. I, on one hand, enjoy the visuals and the music, as I did with the last film. I have a general love for gothic culture. However, as a Batman fan and a scriptwriting student, I'm here to analyse it, and we'll probably tear it to shreds. So let's dive in, shall we? So after the usual Warner's logo and the Bat theme lull us into a false sense of fandom security, we open to a snowy Cobblepot manor, setting the tone for the movie as both a Burton film and a film based at Christmas. I would in no way, though, call this a Christmas movie. Imagine sitting and watching this one with the kids. Oh, wait. So, we see Pee Wee Herman, I uh, mean Mr. Cobblepot, waiting for his baby to be born. However, he is soon put out by the fact that his baby is a cat-bashing penguin mutant. So they do as any normal parent with millions of dollars would do, they research plastic surgery. No wait, they look frequently at their firstborn and throw him in the sewers to die. But after the credits follow, we get a strange Moses-like scene, except with penguins in a sewer. The first question is, what the hell? The second is... What the hell are penguins doing in a metropolitan sewer in the middle of the United States? But I guess the penguins adopt the penguin looking human as their own. Um, okay. Note to screenwriter and Mr. Burton. It works with wolves because they have a pack nature and intelligence. Birds have very small brains. That is all. So we cut to a very small Gotham City looking nothing like it did in the last movie, looking way more like a studio rather than a lot. And it's smaller, so it fits a lot less extras. Meaning Gotham City resembles more of a large town. The lights are turned on and we see the penguin who is walking, talking and wearing clothes, skulking under their feet. Those are some smart effing penguins that raised him. And don't you Burton fanboys give me the circus backstory. Are we really, really meant to believe that a boy that was raised by penguins, which is a stretch enough, crawled out from the sewers, joined the circus and was taught how to be a man? Right. We also see Max Schreck, played by Christopher Walken, at his most Walkenish. Despite being named after an actor who portrayed the first theatrical vampire and sporting a bizarre Einstein level of white afro, also shows himself to be a complete and utter dick to the mayor everyone is meeting and his withdrawn secretary, Selina Kyle. More on her later. He, however, is loved by all the Gotham right up until a bizarre, cartoony and badly acting circus gang show up and ruin it all. So Gordon brings in the entire police force and competently takes them down. Oh wait, no, of course not. He orders the bat signal to be lit and prays for Batman, who is still being his weird broody self, to come and save the day. No, literally, that's his exact words. Thanks for saving the day, Batman. I'm wow. So how does our hero save the day? By incinerating people, of course! That's our man! Oh, and he also does save Selina Kyle. Uh, kind of by accident. Just because he happened to park nearby while she was threatened. So why did the circus gang attack this festive lighting of the tree? To kidnap Matt Srek for the penguin, their apparent boss, who they are quite happy to stay in the sewers with. He has a bunch of dirt on Srek, so Srek agrees to help him resurface the world. Why he needs Srek? Well, to put the rope over his head, I guess, but everything else he pretty much does without him. Also during the scene, we discover the penguin's love for umbrellas, because, well... Damn it, we have to have something from the comic books to keep those pesky diehard fans who love this character and will pay up for a movie to see at bay. I must say now, though, that the Penguin is extremely well acted by Danny DeVito, which is, again, what makes this a decent movie, if not a good Batman one. Selina Kyle returns home, and we find out that her life pretty much sucks. She's a nice, timid girl, but the world just wants to fuck her over. Again, Selina and later Catwoman are very, very well acted by Michelle Pfeiffer. She plays all the roles well. 
timid girl, mad woman, and sex oppressed bitch. But her acting isn't always matched by the writing, unfortunately. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves. She goes back to the office to do some late work, but in the process opens up some encrypted files containing Shrek's very generic and poorly thought out evil plans. So he pushes her through a window. I'm sorry, but no amount of money will pay off anyone who saw that. What are you going to say? She tripped? But luckily for him, logic is about to be totally thrown out the window as Selena Kyle is licked to life by cats. So either she survived and just hit her head, causing her to go mad, or as the movie implies, she is a zombie cat person with supernatural multiple lives. Oh. Okay, I understand that this time the penguin was not exactly the best of character, so they had to do something with him to spice him up. As moronic as their answer was, but Catwoman is a complex, interesting, but simple and realistic character. She is a thief who is inspired by Batman to use a cat motif and has the hearts for him. That's enough. She doesn't need a twisted, tragic or freaky backstory. That's why she's in Shades of Grey. Because she isn't an evil psycho and occasionally helps him out with the big bads. Not just because Batman wants to bang her. Selina returns home and replays her coming home team from earlier, but you know, nuts. And Pfeiffer plays a great crazy woman here as said. And I get the symbolism of the woman lashing out at her oppressed life, even the hell here thing with the letters is kinda cool. But the only thing Catwoman about it is when she puts on the damn costume. So the mayor holds a press conference where a member of the circus gang backflips in, yeah I know, go with it, and steals his baby out of his wife's arms. Hey, there are dozens of us, why don't we try and stop him? Nah, let's just part way and see what happens. Hey, wouldn't it be wise for armed cops to be here after last night? Luckily for them, the entire thing is a ruse to make Penguin appear the hero in saving the baby. Matt Srek stands there next to him in pictures as he's fawned over, and the reporter gets him to reveal his motivations in finding his parents and his human name. Oh wait! Bruce Wayne! Batman! I forgot he was in this movie! He's a nice jolly soul about the Penguin at first. His parents. Again, this scene direct from Gotham Plaza. I'll be fine. But in the very next scene, he's trying to dig up dirt about him and finds out that he was in a circus that kidnapped children. Hell of a turnaround there, Bruce. He then investigates him by driving up in the Batmobile and glaring at him. That's some great detective work there, Batman. So the Penguin finds his parents. Tombstone, that is. They're dead. So while he doesn't ask about inheritance or the family fortune, I don't know. Well, he is busy with his plan to... to... do things. Oh look, cops! Now they sure would have been useful when the criminals were attacking the city. Only finds out his name is Oswald Cobblepot. We then get a newspaper scene that has to be seen to be believed. Penguin, for his parents, I'm fully at peace with myself in the world. You don't need hands as long as you got heart. My heart is filled with love. I feel five feet tall. He's like a frog that became a friend. Nah, he's more like a penguin. This was made in the 90s, folks. For a drama and not a comedy by a paid screenwriter. I'll let that sink in for a moment while we move on. Catwoman, meanwhile, has taken up crime fighting. Well, just against rapists, mind you. Feminism and all that. She then backflips away to... do something else. And that includes showing up at work, looking out of it, and taunting her boss who tried to kill her. But Srek takes it well. Women. Nothing surprises me, Chip. Such a late mother. Who'd have thought Selena had a brain to damage? Bottom line, she tries to blackmail me. I'll drop her out a higher window. Meantime, I got better fish to fry. Ah, oh, Walkin, you have such a way with words. She meanwhile starts to flirt with Bruce, and it must be the only thing they actually took from the comic books for this film. Strike then actually makes use of Penguin deciding to run him for mayor, trying to order a recall on the current one because he won't let him build his power plant sucking thing. He then bribes Penguin in doing it by saying he will get laid. Kids saw this movie, everybody. Penguin also bites a guy's nose with blood flying to add to the fun. Max also mentions he wants the circus gang to cause chaos so that the mayor looks bad. You know, if only this city had, you know, a police force to take care of people like them. <sighs> so the gang starts blowing shit up, complete with a poodle carrying a grenade. Yup. Oh hey, Batman! Where have you been keeping yourself in your own movie? Batman takes them down and hey, this is starting to resemble an actual Batman movie. That's 
that's better. Ah, Batman, our hero, taking delight in cold-blooded murder. Meanwhile, Catwoman, in the first bit of motivation that actually makes sense, starts tearing up Strake's department store in an admittedly cool scene. Batman, meanwhile, is marching nowhere in particular. He luckily comes across the Penguin. Then they have a nice chat about the natural distaste for each other until Catwoman shows up and... Meow. Yeah.